Hello everyone, my name's Stacey and welcome to my studio. So today we have our 60 minute Pilates class. This one is going to focus on the glutes today. So not only the glutes, but the hips because obviously these two work closely together. So we're going to open up the hips, have a nice deep stretch to start off with for today's session. And then we're gonna get into the glutes and strengthen around the glutes, as well as the deep hip rotators in the front and around the sides. So how about we get started? Make your way over to your mat. All you're going to need is your mat. Potentially, you may want to have a pillow, a bolster, or a folded up blanket as well today for our session. And uh, plenty of water nearby. I do like to take water drinks in these hour long classes. So gather your things and I'll meet you at the mat. Okay, hello, we're here and we're ready to go. So before we start today, we are going to do a stretch, just like I said in the intro, we're going to get into the hips and let them open before we engage all of the muscles. So we're not fighting against tight joints. So the very first one we're going to do, bring the hands underneath the knees. Take your feet out in front of your body and in line with your hips. On an inhale breath, we're going to reach tall through the crown, opening up through the spine, lengthening through the body. On an exhale breath, tuck the hips under, round through the back, and curl through the spine until your arms are straight and you can feel a stretch in the upper body. Inhale breath, sitting up tall, rolling through the back, reaching through the crown, nice and long. Exhale, breath, tuck the hips under, curl through the spine, stretch the arms out nice and long. Feel this rounding through your back, this stretch through the shoulders. One last inhale, breath, reaching nice and tall. And exhale, coming back to a neutral position. Now let's bring our legs into a bit of a crisscross. So we're going to cross the legs up here. So we've got two options for this one. Let's start with our right leg out and our left leg bent so that our, our ankle sits just above the knee here. So make sure it's really important we don't rest on the knee because the knee joint doesn't like that. <laughs> so ankles above the knee. Now we're going to take this knee and press it down slightly. You can use your hand or I like to use my forearm because there is a bit of forward movement through this one as well. So we're gonna find a stretch in the hamstring on the bottom leg and a stretch in the outside of the hip on the top leg. So just find what works for you, as I usually say. Um, if you don't want this stretch in the hamstring, I'll show you an alternative if you've got the hip flexibility to get in there. But let's just give this a go for now and see how it feels. So left elbow onto that knee there, take a big inhale breath, sitting tall. Exhale, let's fold forward at the hips while we press down on that knee. So here, like I said, we should feel the hamstring on that right leg opening up and the outside of the hip on that left leg. Now, if you're not feeling that, it's completely fine. It's completely normal. Everybody stretches differently because our bodies are all so different. Uh, but let's just sort of give it a bit of time, give it a chance. So keep breathing, keep folding forward from the hips. Try to avoid this slouching through the back. Okay, keep the spine long, reach the crown tall and then fold. And see if you can press a bit more weight down through the elbow into that leg. Relax the hips around the stretch. The hips will want to try and tense up. But see if you can relax them and just switch them off and let them absorb and take it all in. Breathing here. If you don't like any of this, just come out of the stretch. If it's too neural down the back of your leg, if your knees don't like it, just come out of the stretch. And you can keep doing that one we started with. Now we've got the second option for this one. We're going to step it up a little bit for the hips. Now, give it a try. If it's not working for you, regress back to this stretch. So the right leg we're going to now bend and see if we can get that heel in next to the ankle. So the goal for this one really is to have the ankle next to the hip. Did I say heel next to the ankle? <laughs> ankle next to the hip. Um, both hips on the ground. So we want both of our hips solidly planted into the ground and same place for this, for this right leg, uh, for this left leg, I should say, um, ankle above the knee. So now we're in this twisted up position with the legs. 
So if, if just getting here is a stretch, stay here, chill out, feel the stretch, feel the opening, allow it to come into the body. However, if you would like a little bit more, take a big inhale breath, reach the chest tall. On the exhale, fold forward. Feel the hips sing in this stretch. So you can bring your hands down and forward in front. You can grab your bolster pillow or blanket. Just rest there. Make yourself as comfortable as you can around this stretch. This is a beautiful stretch for opening up through the hips and I do it almost every single day. Find a lot of joy in this stretch. So folding forward and breathing. Remember, if this is enough for you, if just getting here, which most of the time it is, and when I first started doing this, getting into this stretch was enough. And that's fine, just be there, breathe, sit tall, find some relaxation as much as you can around the stretch. If not, we're going for that little tilt. And if here isn't right for you, swing that right leg out straight and stay in that first stretch we did. So just a few more breaths. Now regardless where you are, we're gonna take an inhale breath. On the exhale, we're going to slowly slide our chest around to the right so that it is now above our foot. So our chest is now floating above that left foot. And we feel the stretch really start to switch on in this left hip. Keep breathing over the stretch and relaxing. I can't stress it enough. Relaxing into a stretch is the best thing you can do for it. Allow your body to accept the stretch. Don't put yourself into a fight or flight mode where your body thinks it needs to protect itself. If you're there, then you might be pushing a bit too hard. Just regress it back. Step it back a little. Find that point where it feels uncomfortably comfortable, you know, like that thing where it feels gross, but you know it's good for you. <laughs> feels gross and good at the same time. That's what we want to try and achieve here. Breathing here. Allowing it to open. Feel that hip opening, submit, submitting itself completely to your stretch. Inhale, breath as we come back up and we untwist on pretzel. Bring the feet together and we're just going to do a little flow through the hips to recover from that stretch. So inhale, breath. On the exhale, let's bring our legs over to the left. Just letting the hips sort of rock over. Inhale to the center. Exhale, rock over to the right. We can bring the feet a little bit wider, I think. So let's go a little bit wider with the feet. Inhale, breath, exhale, over to the left. Inhale to the center, knees fall to the right on the exhale. So just do this for a few movements. Ah, feel that nice sort of fluid movement through the hips. Feel your body opening, the lower part of your body opening, preparing. We also use this as sort of a massage on the bum. Getting ready for our glute session today, which is gonna be great. Looking forward to it. All right, back to the center here. Now, left leg comes out straight. We start off here and we're gonna progress into it. Left leg comes out straight. Right ankle comes above the knee, resting on the thigh there. Sitting up nice and tall. And this should straight away bring a stretch into your hamstrings. Unless you're super flexible and you can do the splits and you're amazing, um, then this will bring you into a stretch. And, you know, every day you're different. So some days this will bring a stretch on. Um, other days it won't. You just got to remember that every day we wake up different and to treat your body the way it is that day. Now, elbow comes to the knee. Take a big inhale breath. On the exhale, we float forward with the body, with the chest. We put a little pressure down through that knee with the elbow. Keep reaching along with the spine and the crown. So we don't want to be crunching over here in this sort of folded position. You'll feel a lot of neural energy, a lot of sort of pinching and neural um, pain coming down that left leg. So we want to keep the, leg, the, the length in the spine and the folding forward. Now let's see if we can just transfer a little bit more weight onto that right knee till we feel the hip opening. Keep breathing, keep reaching along. Shoulders stay away from the ears. We're trying not to hold tension here. We're just finding that lovely point of stretch where our body can relax as much as possible. 
Now I hope you've been enjoying my beautiful symphony of birds lately. Um, I've just been having every single day birds at the back in the tree all day. Like just all day having a great time and I love it. And um, I hope you love it too. <laughs> so inhale breath as we come out of this one. Let's go into our big folded up pretzel now. So left leg comes around. So ankle next to the hip, not ankle next to the heel. That would be very <laughs> difficult. So ankle next to the hip. Both of our hips are strong into the mat. So rooting down through the hip bones. Feel that strength and that stability. Now, if you're not quite there, if you're up here, but you still want to give this a go, then just pop a pillow or a blanket underneath your hips so you can ground down with the hips. It's really important you can ground down and find that closed chain where everything is in contact with the mat. That um, ankle comes just above the knee where it was before on the stretch previously. Now, if this is enough for you, take this position, breathe, hold this position, start to practice your breath maybe. So while you're here, I use the opportunity to Breathe into the ribs, keeping the belly active. So slight tuck of the belly button in towards the spine or that T-zone starting to switch on. And start directing your breath into your rib cage and feeling your rib and your lungs. You can use this opportunity to start to, you know, practice and get your body in tune with Pilates. Now, if we want a little bit more from this, we take an inhale breath and we fold forward, still reaching long with the crown. My crown is pointing towards you and so should yours. Your crown should be pointing towards me. You don't want to be down here in this folded position where your crown is pointing towards you on the ground. Keep it nice and long, pointed towards your screen or whatever it is you've got in front of you. Feel that stretch now really opening up in that right hip. You may also feel it in the left hip as well, which is great because you're getting two for one here. Keep breathing over this stretch. Reaching long, shoulders down from the ears. Reminding your body that this is okay. We're in a safe place. There's no need to cause tension or stress. Let's relax and accept this. Now take another inhale breath. On the exhale, we are going to slide our chest around to the left. So it is now above that right foot. So our chest is now sitting just above the right foot. We're breathing here, allowing the body to be, switching off the muscles we don't need, feeling that right hip sing. Few more breaths here, starting to tune into the body now, tuning into the breath, allowing our distractions to move aside for the session and all of our attention and our thoughts and our mind is focused in on our body and our practice today. And we come out of that one slowly. Let's do another little rock through the hips, feet nice and wide, just wider than hip distance. And we'll take an inhale breath on the exhale. We'll rock over to the right this time. Inhale back to the center, rocking over to the left. Inhale back to the center, exhale to the right. Inhale to the center, exhale to the left. Lovely work, beautiful. All right, we're gonna do one more open through the hips. This one I do a lot and I love. Um, so let's, let's not waste any more time, shall we? All right, so we're coming into this lunge position. We're gonna have our right leg forward and our left leg back, both of our knees about 90 degrees. Now we're gonna bring our chest down so that it is pretty much in contact with our thigh there, with our right thigh. Fingertips framing the foot or hand framing the foot. Take an inhale breath. On the exhale, walk your rear leg back as far as you can. Front knee stays above the ankle. So this knee doesn't move, this leg doesn't change whatsoever. Our shoulder should still be able to reach that knee. It's the rear leg we're opening up. So we're going into a deep hip open, deep hip flexor open here. So we breathe for a few. Now let's bring our right hand to our knee. Next inhale, breath. Bring your body up nice and high. So your crown is now reaching towards the ceiling. On the exhale, breath. Release the muscles around the hip and sink into the mat just that little bit lower. You can press against the back of the hip just really lightly if you like to really get an opening here. 
keep breathing around. Keep reaching the crown tall. Keep the chest tall. Keep that breath coming into the ribs so our belly can stay engaged. So our core and our abs are engaged around the lower back, putting that bit of protection around the spine. Now let's bring our left hand down to the mats and we're going to rock to the side. So now all we're going to do is bring our chest towards that right knee and feel the outside of our left hip fall down into the mat and you will feel the stretch now change to the outside of your hip. So to the outside of that left hip. So you can see my torso is facing pretty much all the way towards my right leg. And the stretch will come down the side of your body if you do have tightness in there, which I do. This feels really nice. Breathing through, relaxing as much as we can. Lock this arm out, that's supporting, so we can just sort of let the skeletal system do the work. Breathing, inhale as we come up, changing sides. Left leg forward, let's start down here in this little runner's lunge position. So left shoulder is in contact with the left knee. We take an inhale breath on the exhale. Let's walk that rear knee out as far as we can. All we're doing here is trying to create as long a line as we can from our crown through our body all the way down to our knee. Breathing here for a few. Now this toe can be tucked or untucked. It's mainly preference, um, but just so you know, having it tucked does put a little bit more support and um, sort of strengthening around the kneecap. So if your kneecap's a little bit um, dodgy, you might want to tuck the toes, see how it feels. Now let's bring the left hand to that knee, take an inhale breath as we press our chest up. The crown is now pointing towards the ceiling or the top of your head. Our spine is pretty neutral, so we're not extending through the back. We don't want to hyperextend through the spine here and turn this into extension in the back. We just want to, oh, excuse me, turn it into extension in the hip. Now we take an inhale breath. On the exhale, let's sink the hips down. And feel that beautiful opening through the front of the hip. Now, if you sit a lot, if you travel for work, which you're probably not now, but you might be soon. If you're sitting at a desk a lot, if you find yourself working on your laptop in lots of various sort of locations, which I have been, um, and not in the best position whatsoever, your hips may start to feel it. So we need to open them up and get into them. All right, now let's bring that left hand down to the mat. Rotate your chest around so it's facing towards the left leg. Keep going until you feel the outside of your right hip lowering down into the mat, allowing the opening through that outside of the hip. Such a beautiful stretch. Excellent. Let's come out of that one nice and slow. Always treating our body with care, especially when we come out of a stretch. Now, we're going to start lying down on the mat today. So if you need to, grab a drink, get everything else you need around you. But let's, let's start. <clears throat> okay, so from our lying position, we are first going to do our glute activation exercise. So I have done this one before, but to refresh your memory. What we do here is we are looking at how active our glutes are compared to each other. So we always, we almost always have a stronger side or a favored side and a weaker side or a lazy side because our glutes are so close together and we do so much movement with both of our limbs at the same time, the weak one can piggyback on the strong one. So we need to sort of figure out what's going on, which is weak, which is strong. And when we do our exercises, you might do a few extra reps on your weak side. So this is a perfect thing to do to start. So lying on the mat, neutral spine, so natural curve through the back. Hands come onto the hips, above the hip bone, right above where your glutes are lying on the mat. Now, slight T-zone activation in this. So just that little bit of pulling of the line between the hips. We take an inhale, breath. Exhale, just, just settle yourself here on the mat. Now, 
we're going to take an inhale breath and squeeze both of our glute muscles at the same time and your hips should lift. Feel that lift in the hips. Exhale, lower or relax. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, relax. Inhale, squeeze both. Exhale, relax both. All right, let's get a bit tricky. Inhale, squeeze both. Exhale, release right only. So left should be still squeezing and high. Now inhale again, exhale, release left. Is that hard? Did your left want to turn off with the right? Um, if so, maybe your left is piggybacking a bit. Inhale, breath. Exhale, squeeze both. Release the right, then release left. Inhale, breath. Exhale, squeeze both. This time, release left, then release right. Inhale, breath. Exhale, squeeze both. Release left then release right. So take note there. So if you released your left and your right turned off, that means that your right glute is probably piggybacking off your left a bit and your right might be a little bit weak, but we'll keep going. So now we're going to inhale, exhale, squeeze right only, then squeeze left. So both are on. Now turn off right and turn off left. Let's do that cycle again. Inhale, breath, exhale, squeeze right only. Now squeeze left, so they're both on. Release right, release left. Let's go back in the other direction. Inhale, exhale, squeeze left only. Then squeeze right. Release left, release right. And again, inhale, exhale, squeeze left only. Then squeeze right, both are on. Release left, release right. Now we'll just do a few on the right side, a few on the left side, feel the difference. So <clears throat> in your own time, just squeeze your right glute on and off a few times. See, see what the, how strong it feels or how much, you lift, how much lift you get in your hip. Now go to the left side. Maybe you can't differentiate and you can feel your right switching on at the same time. So if you can't switch one on without the other one wanting to switch on, say for example, I'm doing my left now and my right one keeps turning on, that means my left is weak and it just keeps piggybacking off my right glute and expecting my right glute to do the work for it. So if you've got any pain in your hips, in your lower back, or any issues with that left leg, knee or ankle, there's a good chance it could be attributed to a weakness in your glute. A glute is a really, really big, powerful driver in the hip and the hip is basically the driving force of the body I would say so you know that might be something that you could look at try strengthening that left glute and see if you have any um, improvement all right so we're going to go straight into our pelvic curl so let's bring our feet on the mat now knees bent so in a straight line from uh, from our hip through our knee down to our toe have a look and be really specific about your alignment before we set up take an inhale breath start to think about t-zone Ribs fill with breath, belly stays flat. Exhale, cinch the waist, squeeze the abs, think rib to hips. Inhale, fill the ribs. Keep the T-zone on under your fingertips. Feel for that activation. Exhale, ribs to hips, cinch the waist and accentuate that T-zone activation. Inhale, fill the ribs. Exhale, cinch the waist, T-zone tight, spine is neutral, pulling the pelvic floor up. Make sure you're not doing this huge, you know, this like um, <laughs> tensing through the body. So the T-zone activation is about 50%. So all you need really is to be able to feel the muscles uh, jump up underneath your fingertips there. So let's go into our pelvic curl. We're going to do a decent pel pelvic curl series. So inhale breath, T-zone on, exhale, squeeze the glutes, curve through the spine, roll up one vertebrae at a time, keep peeling, peeling, peeling until you're at the very top. Reset the T-zone, inhale, exhale, reverse that process. So upper spine, middle spine, then lower spine, come down to the mat. The last thing that should touch is your tailbone. When you get there, reset, T-zone, pelvic floor up, inhale, breath, exhale, squeeze the glutes, tuck the hips, roll up, one vertebra at a time. Make sure those knees aren't falling out to the outside. Keep them in. So that's, you know, deep hip rotators and adductors in the inner thigh, 
keeping the legs under control. Now, when we get to the top, inhale, breath, reset the T-zone, exhale, reverse. So we're just doing a few to get our body ready. Reverse that process, upper spine, middle spine, lower spine come down as if you are putting down a, a very overcooked piece of spaghetti onto the mat. Last thing that touches is your tailbone. Inhale, breath, T-zone, exhale, squeeze glutes, tuck the hips and start to roll up. Keep that T-zone active. Now, when we, well, when we get to the top, we're going to take an inhale breath. On the exhale, bring the knees apart. Inhale, back together. Exhale, knees apart. Inhale, back together. Exhale, knees come apart. Inhale, knees come back. Now, a few things we need to worry about here. So keep doing that as I bring you through the cues. Your hips need to stay in the same spot. So we don't want to start dropping the hips as we do those openings. So a few, a lot of things are happening in here all around the hip. The glutes are working extremely hard, adductors, deep hip rotators, um, muscles, deep core muscles, pelvic floor, everything's working hard around our hips to keep you up here while we do those opens. Plus our glute med, which is our small glute muscles on the side are working hard in that abduction, taking the legs away from each other. Nice work. Last one. Let's finish in the center here. Now we're going to brace through the right leg. Take an inhale breath as we float the left leg up off the mat. Exhale to lower down, changing sides. Brace through the left leg. Get it strong. Inhale, floating up that right leg. Exhale to bring down. Brace the right. Inhale, floating up left. Exhale, lower down, keep that core on. Ribs to hips, T-zone tight as we lower. Inhale, brace this left side as we float right. Exhale to lower. Take an inhale breath on the exhale, reverse that curl, process down. Excellent work. All right, so now we're gonna do a little bit of, a little bit of work on the sides. So I would like you to rock your hips over just a little bit so that your weight is now in your left hip. Take an inhale breath, T-zone, exhale, squeeze the glutes, tuck the hips and peel up so that you can feel your left back, or the left side of your body peeling off the mat. Your spine is almost off. So we're really favoring the left side here, getting as much work out of that left glute as we can. When we get to the top, recenter yourself, set the T-zone, inhale, exhale, rock all the weight back over to that left hip and reverse the process down. So all of the weight or more of your weight is over on this left hip and the right is sort of just there to stabilize and keep you balanced. Keep tucking the hips, roll down. Great work. Now let's go to the other side. So all of the weight rocks over to the right hand side. Inhale, tease and exhale, tuck the hips, squeeze the glutes, curl up. Curl, curl, curl. Get to the top. We come back to the center. We reset the T-zone. Both hips working here now. Exhale, rock all of your weight over onto that right hip again. Inhale, breath. Exhale, reverse the process down. Feel that glute working really, really hard. So if you have a weak side, if you found a weak side, this is a great opportunity now to do an extra rep on your weak side. So let's choose our weak side, whatever it is for you. So mine is my right. So I'm going to go over to my right, but for you, choose whichever one it is for you whichever one you felt was working the least at the start. Inhale, breath, set yourself up, T-zone, exhale, squeeze that glute, tuck the hips, curl up, putting all of your weight and attention into that side that we've chosen. Come to the top, center yourself, inhale, breath, reset the T-zone, exhale, come back over to that weak side and roll down, focus on that side. Reverse the process. Your glutes are working hard all the way to the end. Your tailbone touches down. Last. <laughs> Yay. All right, well done. That is our pelvic curl series finished. So we're gonna roll over to our side now. And you guess it, it's not a glute class without side lying. Side lying is everyone's favorite slash least favorite part of Pilates um, because it really shows you how um, sometimes weak an area is and how much work it needs, but also um, sort of highlights this muscle, this glute med, which is quite
quite a small muscle and it burns out really quickly, but it's also very important. So let's line ourselves up. Ankles, knees, hips stacked on top of each other perfectly. So our biggest focus with this side lying stuff, if anything, is that this hip, this top hip, stays directly on top of this bottom hip. Imagine that you are, you have a rod, a steel rod, screwed in there through your hips, attached down to the ground, and this stays still. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, now we've got a 90 degree bend in the knees, and our heels are in line with the hips. So if we look down, we've got a nice big, nice straight line. Your legs are essentially set up like they were before when we were lying on our back, but now we're lying on our side. Continue this line down, so fingertips long from the fingertips through the head, heart, hips, heels. This middle side of the waist needs to be pulling up. You need to have that pulling motion coming up from the hip, from the waist. So you don't need to physically have a gap there um, because that's not realistic. Like I don't even really, I don't even have one. Um, but you want to have that visualization or that thought in your mind that you're keeping this hip up on top of this bottom one. So if we relax it and sink it, then it's now rocking this way. Our belly is collapsing. And then when we do some stuff, when we do stuff, we do this instead of, you know, that lifting. So we want it to come from the muscle and from the hip joints, not from just moving through the hips, if that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> so basically, let's just make sure we keep that visualization of pulling the side of the waist up from the mat. The T-zone's tight, shoulders are down and back. Rib to hip connection, straight line. So we don't want to be folding too much. And we don't want to be popping out through the ribs. Trying to get that all squared. Fingertips come to the T-zone. Now today we're going to do clam modification two and clam modification three. Clam mod two is basically, as we are now, heels lifted. We take an inhale breath on the exhale. Squeeze your heels together and lift your knee towards the ceiling. This is when we need to think steel rod through the hips. Exhale to lower. Sorry, inhale to lower, exhale to lift, inhale to lower. So keep that steel rod in the, in the hips, keep that hip completely still. Don't let it rock back. It wants to rock back so that you've got more movement. We don't need more movement, we need activation. Squeeze the heels, feel for this muscle here. So if you're just going here, that's perfect. As long as this hip is still, I'd rather you do that than roll in the hips and compromise your technique. So keep pulling that middle waist up. Let's really get this leg going now. Let's get it pumping through those reps. If it's moving too fast, you can do a, a breath um, for one. So you go inhale, exhale. Just find what works for you. Bottom glute is working hard to stabilize that bottom heel. Top glute, glute is working hard to get this knee lifted. Now, if you're getting a um, sort of like a pain all the way down your leg, that's very, very common. Um, it's either weakness or tightness in this glute meat area. So unfortunately, um, it's really hard to determine which one it is. So I think your best bet is to do that stretch we did at the start, like pretty decently, a, a little bit longer, spend a bit more time on that at the start, and then start this, start this one off small and in small doses. So if you're here, do, do a few reps and then rest down and then go back into it. Really initiate the movement from here. So think about, put your finger on this part of your hip and imagine that that is switching on as you lift. Another thing you can do is imagine you're pulling your thigh bone into the socket or imagine squeezing your heels together as heavy as you can. Bring your heels back down to the mat if you need to. Squeeze them together really heavy and then do the lift and you'll feel that start to come in here. And like I said, you'll do three or four reps and then rest. All right, so if you've been doing that the whole time I've been talking, well done. I do like to talk a bit. Um, let's rest down. Bring the knees forward now. So what we want is essentially shins parallel to the side of your mat and your hips are parallel to the bottom of your mat. So you're making a seat position. There's exactly 90 degrees at the knees and um, your tailbone is pointed towards the bottom of your mat. Nice big long straight line, get yourself aligned. Now for this one, it's a little bit more, you need a little bit more going on in your head, which there's already a lot anyway, but a little bit more. <laughs> so T-zone on, feel those fingers there, shoulders are down, ribs in. Inhale, breath, exhale. You're going to lift this knee 
initiating with the knee, leave your foot behind, it will follow. Just let this dangle and relax. And then the feet touch and then the knees. Inhale, exhale, lift the knee, foot will follow. Inhale, come back together. Exhale, lift the knee, your foot will follow. Don't worry about anything below the knee, it will do its own thing. So exhale to lift, inhale to lower, keep the ribs locked in and that belly pulling up, shoulders down and back. Keep pressing, use your finger to press in the T-zone, just tell it to switch back on because it will just keep switching off, which is totally fine and totally normal. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower, feel that glute working hard. Let's keep going here. So as you lift as well, keep an eye on that hip. We're only lifting a little bit. It only needs, to, you might even get to here and that's enough and that's fine. And I'm burning through my glute meat at the moment. I have a very brave poker face sometimes, but trust me, it is burning. Let's do a couple more reps here. Whew. One, two, and knees back together. Lovely job. Let's bring the legs out nice and long. We'll do a circle at the hip and this is gonna get into all of those beautiful hip rotators and that glute mid and min. So straight line, have a look down from your toes through your hips, heart, head, all the way to your fingertips. Keep pulling that waist up away from the mat. Take an inhale breath and float that top leg up so it's in line with your top hip. Now, take an inhale breath and start to do circles forward. So we inhale for about three to five circles. We exhale for about three to five circles. If the balance is challenging and you find yourself going like this, little, like spaghetti flopping all over the place, just bend that bottom knee, give yourself a little bit more stability. But if you want a little challenge today, why not put in a balance challenge as well? Now, feel that straight away in that glute, in that side glute mead. We've switched it on and it's already been working hard, so you are going to feel it. Keep pulling the waist up from the ground. Don't let it collapse down. And the circle is coming straight from the hip. So the circle, essentially, imagine that there's a line going from your head all the way to the wall at the base of your body, and you're drawing that circle around that line. Let's do a few more circles. Keep breathing. Inhale for two or three circles. Exhale for two or three circles. Three, two, one. Pause. Inhale, breath. Exhale, reverse the circle. Yes, I am evil, but keep going. You'll thank me when, you're, when you've got really nice, beautiful, strong hips and strong glutes. Keep breathing through this. Maybe not tomorrow when... You've got a little bit of doms, but hey, I'm willing to live with that. So keep breathing. Keep the shoulders down. T-zone on. Three, two, one. Relax it down. Give it a stretch across the body. So get that leg out there. Little punch, little massage if you need it. I still do after five years of Pilates. I still need a massage in there because that muscle just... Gets me every time. All right, now let's um, actually, we're gonna roll over into our tabletop position and do our horse kick between here. And I want you to feel, again, the hip rotators and the stabilizers in this, this hip that we just worked. So it doesn't matter what side you started on, but remember that side. So for me, I started on my right side. So I'm gonna get myself into my tabletop position, wrists below shoulders, fingers pointing forwards. My knuckles of my palm are pressing into the mat, but my palm itself is pulling up. Fingers are pushing down, up through the shoulders, strong through the shoulders like a proud bulldog guarding my territory. Tense under the armpits, set that really strong upper body foundation. Now knees are together. Now, like I said, I just worked my right leg so my right leg is gonna stay down on the mat. I'm gonna float my left leg up off the mat. And I want you to note how much this stabilizing leg is doing and all of those little muscles that we just switched on, how much harder they're gonna work now to keep you here. And that's the beauty of doing this kind of stuff, especially before you do a squat session or something like that and you choose a few of these exercises to get those muscles on and then feel how much more they work during that session and how much more 
evenness there is in your training. So pushing up, setting up, stop talking, floating that right left leg, because I started on my right, so floating the left leg. Take an inhale breath, on the exhale, extend your leg, then lift it up in line with the body, ribs to hips, T-zone tight, push up through the shoulders, no extension through the spine. Inhale, draw the knee back in. Exhale, extend, then lift. Inhale, draw back in. This is two movements here. You straighten the leg, then you lift it. Draw back in, inhale. Exhale, extend, then lift. Inhale, return the knee. Now keep going with that. Keep moving through that movement. Keep pushing up through the shoulder blades. Tense under the armpits. Pressing down through the hands. Neck is neutral. T-zone is on. Breathing. Ribs to hips as we lift up, keeping that really good lock on the spine. Our core is doing its job. Now feel the stabilizers in that leg you, uh, you started on, working hard. They're probably, you're probably feeling more in that leg than you are on the one that we're working, and that is what we want, really. So why I chose to do it that way. Keep breathing, keep the neck and head neutral, looking down just above the fingers. Pushing up through the shoulder blades, T-zone on. Let's do one more, but we're gonna hold at the top. Draw the toes back towards your shin and rotate so that your toes are pointing away from your body. Inhale, breath, exhale, sweep out to the side, inhale back to the center. So keep going with that. Exhale to sweep out to the side, inhale to the center. I'll show you that from this perspective. So you can see what I'm doing, pushing up. Everything's up, switched on. So we go out to the side and we come back to the center. So keep that rib to hip engagement. Keep working hard in this stabilizing leg. It's actually, you know, screaming out. <clears throat> keep breathing. Try and keep those hips even. So keep the both of your hip bones pointed down towards the mat, evenly spaced from the mat. So we're not rocking up here in this hip. Rib to hip connection, keep breathing, T-zone tight, one more. And whew, leaning back, give that poor old glute a little rest. She's just worked her guts out. Let's grab a drink actually. So grab a drink if you've got water nearby. <clears throat> we'll give that glute a rest. Just spilled my water all over myself. So if you come halfway through and I'm covered in water, reverse, rewind to here and you'll know why. All right. My entire body is now hydrated, including my clothes. Let's roll over to the other side. Make sure you remember what side you started on. We don't want to do the same side twice. And start with our side lying. So we're doing our clam two and three. So clam two, let's set ourselves up. Ankles, knees, and hips are stacked on top of each other. We've got a straight line traveling from our heels through to our hips, around about 90 degrees at the knees. Now we're extending out long through the rest of the body, resting on that um, bicep for a pillow, pulling the waist up away from the mat. T-zone tight, shoulders down and back. Now let's squeeze the heels together and do that little lift in the heels. Now if you do have that, that sort of sensation that travels all the way down your leg, leave the heels down and squeeze them together and concentrate on this initiation here. Steel rod secured your hips, they aren't going anywhere. Let's inhale, exhale to lift, inhale to lower. So once you've got the rhythm and you've got everything working, just keep doing it and don't rest. So at the bottom, it's just a tap. There's no pausing at the bottom or resting, We're getting it working. Feel that bottom glute working now. So sort of feel the difference or take note of the difference. Um, when you switch something on before you do work, how much more you get out of it. So if you did this kind of stuff before you squat, then you are gonna get so much more out of your squatting session and your squat is gonna be so much better because you're using more. You're letting more muscles do more work. The big ones are sharing the load with the little ones. The muscles want to use work in unison, 
but sometimes they don't if they don't have the opportunity to strengthen. Keep working that. Now, I actually get that, um, that sort of traveling sort of crampy feeling or that burning feeling that goes down my leg on this side. So I'm going to drop my heels. I'm going to listen to my own advice and keep going from the heels dropped. Keep pulling the waist up, T-zone. So my right side I know is weaker. Um, so that's why I get that sort of traveling, burning sensation down my leg. Shoulders down and back, breathing through, breathing into the ribs. Let's do a few more here. And last one. Okay, come into mod three for clam. So basically just swinging our legs forward. So now we have 90 degrees at the hips and 90 degrees at the knees. Have a look down if you need to. So shins parallel to the front, thighs parallel to the bottom. Come back down, keep that waist up away from the mat, T-zone tight. Fingertip there for a minor shoulders down and back and let's inhale, exhale, lift that knee. Let the rest of the leg just tag along for the ride. So the knee lifts, the shin and the leg just follow suit. Make sure that this top hip isn't rolling. We've got our ribs locked into the hips. The T-zone is tight. The shoulders are down and back. Keep breathing. Yes, there's lots and lots and lots of things to think about. We've got about 10 minutes left. Nice work. Really feel that muscle. When you lift the knee and then you go to launch that, or you go to you know, engage to get the foot off, feel that muscle switch on and feel it really have to work. Nice work. Let's do a couple more. Last one. And let's come back down into our straight line now. So straight from our fingers down to our toes. That's a big bird gang out there having a great old time. <laughs> um, so toes, think heels, hips, heart, head, hand. Straight line. We want to keep imagining that we're pulling this side of the body up from the mat. Our T-zone is on, shoulder blades down and back. Top hand is here for a balance. Remember, we can take this leg into a bend if we need it. Inhale, breath, sweep this leg up in line with the body. Exhale, start to make circles. Now, remember, we've drawn a laser line through our body. So we've got like a plumb line, if you think from the wall in front to the wall behind. And you're just trying to draw a circle around that plumb line, around the center point of your body. Keep T-zone on. So the T-zone is going to keep you stable through this part of your body and stop you from rocking forwards and backwards or rolling over. Keep the ribs to hips active. That's going to stop you from hyper or overextending through the belly. Keep the shoulders down and back. Keep breathing. Remember, inhale for maybe three circles. Exhale for three. Find what works for you. And let's pause. Guess what? We get to reverse. Woo! If you are cursing me right now, I'm probably in as much pain as you are. <laughs> so if that makes you feel better, I, I hope it does. Now, keep that rib to hip locked in, shoulders down and back, T-zone tight. Keep breathing. Stay under control. Don't let your body start flopping around. Breathing here, three, two, one, half of one, quarter of one, rest. It's a little trick I used to use in military training. It was very popular. I'm sure it was popular with you right then. Okay, into our four point kneeling and we're gonna go into that horse kick. So bringing our setup in together, so wrists directly below the shoulders, fingertips pointed forwards, the knuckles of the hand pushing into the mat, fingertips pushing into the mat, palm pulling up, pushing up through the shoulder blades, tensing under the armpits, and we are set here. Proud bulldog. Take a few seconds here just to really establish your foundation position. Now bring the knees together, floating up on the leg we just, floating all of our weight, sorry, onto the leg we just worked. So if you just worked your right leg, all of your weight goes onto your right leg. 
Now take an inhale, breath set the T-zone, exhale, extend the leg, then lift. Inhale, return to center. Exhale, extend, lift, inhale to center. Exhale, extend, then lift, two different movements. Inhale, return to center. As we extend and lift, think ribs to hips, keep that torso under control. Don't allow your body or your back to come out of neutral. Keep pushing up through those shoulder blades. Keep setting that T-zone every time you forget. It's totally normal to forget and for it to switch off. As long as you keep turning it back on, you'll be making progress. Keep pushing up through the shoulders. Keep the eyes neutral, so looking towards just in front of the fingers on your mat. Feel that stabilizing leg screaming at you. That's great. That's what we want. We want to hear it. We can hear it. Nice work. Staying strong through our body. Everything is under control. Just extending that leg and then bending the leg. Let's do one more here. Meet at the top, flex the toes back, bring the toes away from the body and then sweep out to the side and then back to the center. Inhale out, exhale back. Really use your core now to control your body so we don't fall over. Keep those hips evenly distanced from the ground. So both of the hip bones pointing down so towards the mat. Feel the stabilizing leg. Giving you a good yell. Nice work. Let's do two more here. And bending back. Just sitting back on the heels and resting here. If you don't like this position, find one that you do like. We'll just rest here, rock through the hips. Relax, let our body recover from that little bit of torture. Well, good torture, isn't it? It's, it's all good at the end of the day. <laughs> all right, so we are going to finish on a nice little burner into the glute max. So our big meaty glute muscles from our front lying position. We've got a few really nice exercises that get it, get it going and get it working well. All right. Let us delay no longer. We're going to come forward into what's called a prone position. So prone is lying forward down. So the front of your body is down on the mat. So this is prone, lying forward. And then when you roll over, this is supine. Supine, prone. So if you hear those words get thrown around, which they do a fair bit in the fitness industry and sometimes they aren't explained, that's what they mean. Um, the way I remember it back in, you know, Anatomy 101, supine is facing upwards. So imagine you've got a bowl of soup and you're holding your bowl of soup, that supine, prone. So this is, I don't know how great this is, but pronate, donate. So you've got money, imagine you've got money in your hand and you're donating it into a bin, pronate, donate. Anyway, that's my, that's my way of remembering. So this is our prone position lying forwards. Now we're going to just bring our hands in front of our uh, chest here and they're gonna act as a pillow throughout these exercises. So bring your forehead down to your hands. Now I'll try not to yell at you and overpower this um, voice in the mic. Bring your belly button up away from the ground. So imagine that you are trying to let a family of ants through underneath your belly. So you're really just trying to pull that belly button up and this is your T-zone activation. All right, so now we are going to pull that up, take an inhale breath, on the exhale, float both of your legs up off the mat. So imagine you're trying to straighten and point, reach through your toes towards the wall or the, the space at the end of your mat, and then lift up from the hip and the back stays completely neutral and still. Now you might only have a little bit, this might be your lift range and that's perfectly fine as long as you're feeling it in here. Hamstrings and glutes are going to feel this. Now from here, we're going to do what's called our butterfly, butterfly legs. So we're gonna flex the toes back towards the shins 
externally rotate so our heels are pointed towards each other and beat the heels together. So we inhale for three to five beats. We exhale for three to five beats. Now you can rest your head down on your hands, but I'm just gonna keep mine up so I'm not overpowering the mic. Now keep breathing here, keep pulling the belly button up away from the mat. If you feel this pinch in your lower back, that is a good indication that your core has given up. So you need to come out of it, rest, reset, reset that T-zone, and then come back into the movement. Keep going, keep going. If you feel that pinching or that uncomfortable pinching in the lower back, come out of it, rest, reset, T-zone tight, come back into it. Okay, if it continues to pinch, then maybe just sit this one out and you can go into a pelvic curl or you can do some squats. But I really don't want you to work through pinching pain through the, the lower back. So keep going here, breathing three to five. Inhale, exhale. Keep the shoulders down and back. Keep that belly button pulling up. T-zone tight. Nice work. We're gonna do a few more here. Three, two, one. Rest. Give that lower body just a little bit of a break before we go into grasshopper legs. Now this one again is excellent for glute med activation, uh, sorry, for gluteus maximus activation. We're actually gonna do both and then one at a time. So we get that, you know, single leg, si single side stre strengthening happening. So <clears throat> inhale, breath, belly button up, T-zone tight, exhale, float the legs up off the mat. Inhale, flex the feet back so that our heels are pointed to the ceiling, toes to the ground. Exhale, squeeze the hamstrings and glutes, bend the knees, bring the knees to, uh, heels together. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the heels together above the knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale. Squeeze, flex, bring the heels together above the knees. Inhale, point and extend. Now, exhale, right leg only. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left leg only. Inhale, extend. Exhale, right. Inhale, extend. Exhale, left. Inhale, extend. Bring both legs down. Inhale, exhale, float, right leg only. Flex the toes back. Inhale, exhale, bend. Inhale, extend. So you're doing a hamstring curl on one leg. Exhale, bend the knee. Bring the heel in towards the bum. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend the knee, flex that hamstring. Bring that heel right in. Inhale, extend. Change sides. Right leg is down and off. Inhale, teaser and exhale, float. Left leg up, flex the toes. Inhale, breath, exhale, bend the knee, flex the hamstring. Bring the heel in towards the bum. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend, flex. Inhale, extend. Exhale, bend and flex. Inhale, extend. One more. Exhale, bend and flex. Inhale to extend. Bring your body down to the mat. Woo, well done. You're finished on your glutes. What a good session. Okay. Great work, guys. That's the session done. We're going to do a little cool down and stretch. So I'm going to grab my pillow, bolster, hold it up, blanket, whatever you have. I've got my bolster and we're just going to have a little stretch down the hamstrings, the back of the body and through the glutes. Also grab a drink. See if I can get all of it to my mouth this time. All right. So really good work. Now that session is going to have, Pretty much gotten everything around your hips from the back. We did a little bit of adduction, so a little bit of these hip muscles here that come that bring our legs together, and we would have had a little bit of work in our deep hip rotators. It really does depend on um, on how much activation you have there already, or how much strength you have there already. If you've got limitations like tightness, then that could be holding some muscles back. Um, but I I am going to be doing some videos on how to activate some of the deeper hip rotators that sometimes get bullied out of the way by our big hip flexors. So that's to come. Um, but otherwise, I, I really hope that you did feel some, some deep work in the hips there. 
and the glutes. So let's come seated on our thing that lifts our hips up. So whether it's a pillow, blanket, whatever you've got, bring the legs out in front and we are going to see if we can straighten them up. Now I'm really tight in my hamstrings today. So I'm gonna have a bend in my knees, but if you want your legs straight and you can still keep a neutral spine, then by all means do that. Just have a quick check in. So straighten your legs, feel, you can feel bending through your spine. Um, then, you know, maybe just take a little bit of a bend. It does not matter. Let's take a big inhale breath. Grabbing on behind the thigh here. On the exhale, let's pull ourselves down. Keep the crown reaching tall towards the space in front of you. Keep folding down until you can get your chest to your thighs. Now, if you need to be like this to get your chest to your thighs, then that's what you need to do. Everybody is different. Folding forward until we find that space. Now, grab whatever you can reach. It might be your shins, it might be your feet. You might wanna just grab onto, if you've got something nearby, like a chair or a table. Just something where you can anchor your upper body. You might wanna just keep holding onto underneath your hamstrings here. You can, even if you want to, give yourself a little hug under here. Feel that really increase the stretch. Actually, let's all do that. Let's grab yourself, grab your arms underneath your thighs. So as if you're giving yourself a hug around your legs, keep reaching the chest tall. Keep that, um, your whole body or your whole torso coming down onto your thighs. Breathe here for a few. Toes are pointed up towards the ceiling. You might start to feel a bit more relief in that stretch. So in that instance, if you feel like it, you might wanna take a little bit more. Move your heels forward by a few centimeters. Take another big inhale breath. Reach tall on the exhale, fold forward from the hip until everything's down in contact with your thigh, torso to thigh. Hug yourself underneath, pull your shoulders down and back and that will help you to come further into the stretch. Holding here for a few breaths, breathing through. Lovely work. Inhale coming up. All right, now the final stretch we're gonna do in our hips and glutes, I really think is best if you can find a wall or your couch or something nearby that you can press your foot up onto. So if you need to move, if you've got your phone, just take it with you and find a wall. Um, and let's just bring ourselves now. So we want to bring our hips all the way into the wall. So your hips, your hip bones are in contact with the wall. Bring your legs up the wall now so that they're straight. So you're feeling that stretch in the hamstrings and pull your toes back towards your shins. Now feel this stretch through the back of the legs. It's a beautiful stretch. And the beauty of it is that it requires no effort because the wall is doing the stretching for you. Now, if you're not quite there yet, you can have a bend in the knee. Keep breathing here. Now, what we're going to do is bring our feet to the wall. So feet flat against the wall. Grab onto your shins or your ankles. See if you can pull them down. Now we're going into a really nice inner thigh opening. So elbows push into the inner thighs. So pushing your knees away from each other with your elbows. Feet are flat against the wall. Feel your adductors, your inner thighs opening up. You want your um, tailbone to be pointed towards the wall and your pelvis flat against the ground. Feel this lovely opening here. Now we're going to wiggle our bottoms away from the wall by about a foot. Bring your right leg into a 90 degree bend at the knee and get your left ankle on just above the knee on the thigh. Now lift your hips a little bit. Inhale, exhale, bring your hips back down to the ground. So flush, hips flush against the ground. Feel that stretch come into this right thigh, uh, sorry, right glute. Now what we can do here if we want to is rocking from side to side. So just guiding with your hand. You can rock that left knee out to the side, away from your center line. 
and then you can rock it all the way over the other side. So now it's coming towards the right side. Do that a few times and find your sticky point, your point of tension where you have the most tightness and hold for a few breaths, relaxing. Let's change sides. Now I'm going a little bit over an hour, I know, but hey, can't rush art, can you? All right, so ankle just above the knee, resting on the thigh, lifting the hips. Exhale as we press those hips back down towards the earth. Feel that beautiful opening and stretch in that left hip and glute. And again, you can use a bit of guidance from your hand for that side to side rocking. Do it a couple of times both ways until you feel that tight point. And let's just hold. Wonderful opening here through that hip. We can put a little pressure on the outside of the knee, bringing it back in towards the body. And let's slowly come out of the stretch. Make your way back to your mats. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for your practice. I really appreciate you coming and spending the time with me and choosing me for your Pilates journey. Now, uh, as usual, there will be a full body flow uploaded on Friday. So my full body flow this week, I am focusing on the root chakra. So the, the rooting or the grounding um, so basically all that means really, if you don't know what the root chakra is, is that we're going to be doing a lot of stuff sitting and I'm going to focus it more on a um, ground flow where we get into some stretching. We'll do a little bit of limbering, a little bit of stretching and just a little bit of strengthening, you know, grounding poses to go along with my, my mindfulness, uh, my mindful energize from Monday where we did all those strong mountain poses. And um, we're going to do some soft strengthening poses from a stable position. So I hope to see you on Friday. Otherwise, have a great day and I will see you later in the studio.